speaking of people on your team, I mean, you've got a very uh, great management team that has been with you for many years. What would you say that you do as a leader to keep them inspired and, and why they've stayed aboard with you for so long? Uh, well, I, I'll first say it took a long time to get this team. Um, it takes 10 years, I would say, even for a really good employee to become a seasoned, high-quality non-bank lender. Most, most people who try to become a non-bank lender fail. So, so it's, it's not easy to build a team. It took me a long time. Um, what I think our people find, especially our senior people find, interesting is they get to be involved in both debt and equity transactions, which is really unusual. Most organizations uh, force the employee to either focus on one or the other, but not both. And it actually makes them better at equity and makes them better at lending by, by understanding both areas. So I'm a big fan of it. It's not for everybody. It's only the most seasoned people that can do particularly the equity transactions, but they get to do them. Um, as, so as I kept growing the businesses, we now have Atrium, we have uh, a pension fund that we act for for low risk lending, which does not compete with Atrium. Uh, we have a high yield debt fund, which is higher risk than Atrium. And then we have the equity fund. So they're all synergistic. They don't compete with each other, but it's a really interesting platform going from low risk to high risk, low return to high return. And it makes recruiting much easier when you have those four platforms to talk about. Are you, do you have succession planning happening at your firm? Uh, just recently, I put it into place. Our, uh, I spent two years thinking about it. And I recruited an ex-board member to help me with it and tell me if he thought um, uh, some of the terms and conditions uh, of them becoming owners was overly onerous, overly generous, just to help me through it. And uh, so we brought in the top, I brought in the top four people who'd been with us for a minimum of five years, up to 15 years um, as minority shareholders um, uh, last July 1st. Has that decision, have you noticed a positive energy coming from your team as a result of making that decision? Has anything changed? Yeah, they act more like owners rather than senior employees. Um, <laughs> but they were all terrific to begin with or else I wouldn't have brought them in. Of course. So if you ask me, do they work, you know, 20% harder than they did before? Well, they were already going full tilt before. So, um, but it, you know, this way I know that we, sh that we have sort of common interests, um, that we're all trying to strive for the same thing and, uh, and, and that they'll stay with us for a long time. Right. So um, I'm taking it that hard work and a, a hard work ethic is very important at CMCC, <laughs> as it should be, given everything that you do. So that would lead me to ask you, Rob, to talk about some of the fundamental philosophies that you have and your team has at your firm. So there's a, there's, there's a bunch of them. Um, first of all, I'm a big believer in focusing on a limited number of activities where you're where you're experienced and you're, and you're proficient. So lending, evaluating development opportunities, those are the areas we're really good at. And so those are the areas that, that we focus. Um, I'm a big believer in avoiding conflicts. Um, almost all of, all of our competing firms, uh, our peers have some degree of conflict and we've really tried to avoid that. So any transaction, for instance, that involves equity, goes into the equity fund, unless there's something about it that doesn't fit into the equity fund. So the equity fund has a maximum term of seven years. If it's a 12 year investment, we can't put it in there. If we really thought it was an interesting transaction, we might um, look at putting a group together. Has that happened in the last two or three years? No, but it, it would be something we could consider, but it wouldn't be competitive. Um, so we like to avoid conflicts. Um, Oh, uh, I think one thing you mentioned earlier is we, we look at downside. We think if you cover off the downside um, and look at the upside, but, but focus more on the downside, the upside will look after itself. And, and one thing I've done, which is probably 
hurt me to some extent is we've grown, even though it feels like we've grown quickly, relative to our competitors and our peers, we've grown pretty slowly and pretty incrementally where we've always had the management team to look after whatever, whatever we've taken on. And, and lastly, particularly in the equity investments, but also lending, we try to avoid excess, land. We try to avoid excess leverage. Excess leverage is great when, when the economy is booming, but it's a double-edged sword and it really comes back to bite you when uh, things are tough. And that really helped us on our equity investments when COVID hit. The fact that we didn't have any excess leverage. In fact, we had very conservative leverage in every single one of our investments and in every single one of our funds.